Hey, it's Chris. Some people like to act like this is a bad word. They're like, oh, the it can't multitask the way I want it to. Or, oh, the it doesn't have the Mac apps that I want. Oh, the well, I can't hook it up to an external monitor. And you know what? To an extent, I get it. But you know what else? I've been using the iPad to get some serious work done. Thanks to the help of these awesome apps, which I'm about to share with you right now. Today, I've got for you an app that combines notes, to-dos, whiteboarding, and a daily planner. I've got another app that describes itself as the missing half of your knowledge graph. I've got an app that's meant to act as your second brain, allowing you to make and then follow connections between all your thoughts. I've got an app that's literally taking on Google and doing a real good job of it. And I kid you not, an app that uses artificial intelligence to write your ad, email, website, blog, headline copy, and many other forms of copy for you. Clover is probably the coolest all around note taking app I've ever laid eyes on. And what I mean by that is, it's like someone went out and picked out all the best parts, fused them together, and then added some extra unique features just to give it some extra oomph. Here's a picture of it. May look kind of familiar right at first glance, but it's not just about productivity, like Notion might be. And it's not just about creativity either. So aside from some regular notes like this, you can also create some infinite spaces where you can draw, you can use the Apple Pencil to handwrite, you can combine images and icons and text. You can embed things like YouTube videos. For instance, I have a fitness note where I keep track of workout stuff, the exercises that I wanna do and whatnot, and it's really great to be able to embed a YouTube video with demos for each exercise right within the app. And as you can see, I can actually pinch to zoom out grab the pencil tool, and now I've got a much bigger canvas to play around with. What I've really enjoyed about this app so far is that it combines your traditional text editing capabilities. I can tap anywhere on this surface to add some text, like you can see here, and move it around, with a freeform design tool. So really, it gets rid of a lot of the constraints. And here, you really do get the best of both worlds, and you can see things are layered. This image is over some of what I've drawn, but then it's underneath this arrow there. Now, because this makes use of the Apple Pencil, that's one of the things that really sets it apart from a Mac app or the Mac version of this same app. And I really feel like this is one of those apps, those key apps that make owning a paper-like screen protector worth it. Now, of course, there are some more traditional note-taking features that you wouldn't wanna be without. For instance, to-dos. Also, if you come from the Realm Research world, you're gonna be happy to note that we have note linking and backlinking, yes. Now, I just showed you recently in an Apple Notes Tips video how to link your Apple Notes together, but that's not nearly as intuitive as this. And then, just like Notion, really, type a forward slash, and you'll get all your formatting options as well. So, wow, I love everything about this app, but I gotta show you one one more feature before we move on to the next one, and that is the quick note feature. Nope, not those quick notes. Down in the bottom left corner, there's a lightning bolt icon. If you tap on it, you get a quick note. So I'm just gonna say, drink some nitro coffee. And then you can see it's added to my daily quick notes. Now, I'm a person who does a lot of research, like a lot, and that means a lot of reading and a lot of highlighting. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, I just, I don't really like Instapaper or Pocket anymore, and I haven't for years, but I found something much, 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 much better. It's called Command Browser. And this is the app that describes itself as the missing half of your knowledge graph. But here's the thing, you gotta get that knowledge from somewhere. David Perel on Twitter actually pointed out that reading is kind of like collecting dots, and writing is kind of like connecting the dots. But how do you read those dots? How do you collect those dots? Something like Command Browser is gonna be perfect. So like the name implies, Command Browser is a browser. You find the article that you want to highlight, just like you would suspect, grab your text and highlight it. But here's where things get interesting. Not only can I highlight, but I can also tap on that and journal. So I can write myself a note about this highlight, and then what I can do is add my highlight and my note to a journal. And then if I come back to the main page, I'll see all my journals. I'm gonna select ID, and you can see I've started stashing some quotes, some things I've highlighted, along with some of my notes, and I can do some interesting things here. I can add an integration. I can sync this to Readwise or to Notion, which is so powerful. So instead of just having these things highlighted, I can do something with these highlights. I love that. You can see there's a place where I can message each individual highlight if I wanna send it to somebody. If I swipe right, I can mark it as important and it will kind of highlight it for me. But if I hit the command icon up here, I can just tap on highlights, see all the highlights that I've made, literally all of them, 
or just ones that are in certain notebooks. And then what you can actually do is come in and swipe and tag each individual highlight as well. Now that's something you can do after, like I'm showing you here, or you can tag things as you save them. Now it's not just for highlighting text, that's simply how I plan on using it, but you can save things like images, you can even save things like TikToks in here and use tags and sift through everything as well. Hey, real quick, before we get any further, why not take a second and hit subscribe? If you're getting some value out of this video, I've got lots of additional app-related videos always coming down the pipeline. Also, I've been doing some deep dives into only the coolest apps to help people unlock all the hidden secrets and features in those as well. Just recently, I did one for Apple Notes and for Apple Reminders, so there's a lot here, and I don't want you to miss out. Obsidian is the app on my screen right now, and I can tell you right now, this is not a note-taking app for everybody. Not everybody, the general average user, is going to like Obsidian. But if you're the kind of person who's really serious about getting stuff out of your head and keeping track of it, and you don't necessarily want to have to use a traditional file folder structure, to organize your thoughts, you would prefer to have a knowledge graph type of app connecting the dots for you, then Obsidian is going to be right up your alley. Basically, you write out your notes, and instead of worrying about creating a new sheet or document every time you make a note, just put your notes in your daily note. And then, by adding some double brackets around certain words, you will be able to link certain thoughts within your notes together automatically. So there's a view within the app that will show you a graph of how all your thoughts are connected together. You'll see all these lines, these points being connected. And it's a really powerful way to simply write and not have to worry about the organization so much and to actually discover connections between your thoughts that you didn't even know existed. But it also does take a little time to wrap your head around the concept because it's so different. And I would recommend you know 20 to 30 minutes set aside to understand how these knowledge graph type of apps work. What you really need to understand here though is the power of the double bracket. So I'm gonna select the word love here and I'm gonna tap the bracket symbol and you'll see that it's turned that word love into a link. Now if I tap on it, I can follow that link. It takes me to a blank page because it created a page for the word that I had in the double brackets, for love. Dream with me for a second about the power that's now at your fingertips. So in this instance, so anytime I'm writing a note, maybe in my daily note, and I mention iPad apps, I can double bracket that and get myself over to this note very easily without having to worry about folder structures or any kind of hierarchical organization. This app can do so much and it's really unique. If I swipe a finger down, I'm gonna get my command palette, my command options for all the things that I can actually do, whether it's backlinks or checking out the graph view. So there's lots of ways to configure this. This is a heavy hitter app that I don't have the time in this video to delve too deeply into, but please check it out if you're really into notes because this could really help you get a lot of stuff done. I have to bring your attention to Neva. It's a new search engine, so it's taking on Google head on, and what it's designed to do is to give you 100% real search results. Why would they do that? Well, mainly because Google serves you up to 40% ads within its search results, which is already not cool, and Google also is gonna track you. And Neva blocks thousands of different trackers, so no ads, blocked trackers, but on top of that, I really like that Neva lets you pick the news sources and the retailers that you either like or trust the most to be included in your results. So I'm gonna search for Nitro Coffee just to show you what how this works. And this looks very familiar, right? Looks kind of like a normal, typical search result page would look like. I can see videos about Nitro here. I can see related searches off to the right, which is pretty useful. I'll just tap on Starbucks Nitro. And you'll notice not a single ad anywhere in any way, shape, or form. Now you get all the same options, personal images, maps, news, videos. I'm gonna tap on news, and you'll notice this panel off to the right. Change the way you see your news. You're in control. So I'm gonna customize, and maybe I don't want to see uh, New York Times content much, so I'll say prefer less, and maybe I do want to see more Wall Street Journal content, I'll say prefer more. And you can already see here, I'm back on my default search and I'm getting some location information, what the weather's like, for instance, and my news sources are already customized, all to the Wall Street Journal, since that's the only one that I added in there. Very highly customizable, and here's what I like about this service. Because you pay a monthly fee, and it's $5 a month to use this, but you get three months free to try it out, 
they really think that you're gonna like it, they're giving you three months, not seven days, not two days, three months, then because you're paying, they are responsible to you, their customer, not to advertisers, which is the paradigm shift with how people have been using and interacting with Google search over the years. Now we gotta point something out. If they're competing with Google, they really have to know what they're doing to get people to switch, right? Well, check this out. On the bio page, we have one, two, three, four ex-Googlers who are part of the executive team here. People who used to be senior vice presidents or VPs or just ex-presidents at Google. So yes, I think Neva knows what they're up to. And so far, I've just been loving it. And I think I'll absolutely end up paying this $5 a month because it's that good and it's that important. Jarvis is an app that you can find at conversion.ai, not conversation, conversion.ai, which means, yeah, it's a web app. It's not found in Apple's App Store. But you know what? Not every app that's awesome for your iPad is in the App Store. I've created a shortcut for Jarvis right on my home screen. It looks like a regular old app with a great icon. Jarvis is template based. So we have a long form assistant, which can help you write something as long as a blog post. There's a content improver. If you have written an email and you just need it to sound more professional, to be improved, you can use the content improver. Or maybe you need help describing your product's unique value proposition. There's a template for that. If you run Google or Facebook ads, there's something there for you. This is definitely gonna be great for people into search engine optimization. All right, let's try the creative story template. I'm just pulling something out of thin air here, okay? Plot, I'm gonna say, a coffee lover tries to take over the world by inventing a coffee machine robot army. That sounds pretty good. Can it handle it? Tone of voice, witty. Let's do it. This is option number one. It was a dark and stormy night when the coffee lover, who had been up all day inventing new ways to make coffee, decided that enough was enough. The world needed more coffee. And so he turned on his robot army and they went around the world making sure every single person drank his delicious concoction. <laughs> at first, people were freaked out and swatting at them as if they were flies. But soon, everyone began running to meet them because it felt like Christmas morning. Eventually though, people got tired of drinking nothing but caffeinated water and no one knew what else to do. And so they simply did not drink anything at all which eventually led to death by dehydration. <laughs> what? Uh, that was crazy. That was a, a creative story. If you have writer's block and you just need to jump past it, this could be a great tool. One of the features that I really love is called explain it to a child. You can put something that's kind of tricky to understand into this and it will spit something out using vocabulary, using words that are very simple. Now, aside from the templates, there's a new feature called boss mode, and you can basically tell Jarvis what to do. So I'm gonna say, write an introductory blog paragraph about the history of Hot Wheels cars. And we're gonna let it process and see what it comes up with. Wow, so there it is, and I could see it told itself, answer this question. How did Hot Wheels make their way into the hands of children around the world? And then it answered its question by saying, Hot Wheels are basically a line of 1 64th scale die cast toy vehicles, which were initially made by Mattel in 1968. Yada, yada, yada. It's written out that whole introductory paragraph for me, and I can go in and make changes and tweak it and tune it to be just how I want it. There's just so much that it can do. I can't even tell you all the features, but definitely, Definitely worth checking out. Now, we're at the end of this video, and I've gotta tell you, I've made so many great iPad apps videos over the years. You gotta check them out if you're new around here. I'm gonna link them up down below, the ones that have gotten the most hits anyways, so you can get caught up with everybody else. And I would also love to connect with you on the podcast. It's the Hey, It's Chris podcast. I'll link that up down below too. It comes out every Friday, and it's really just hanging out. It's you and me just chilling, talking about Apple, maybe the news, what's new in my Apple ecosystem, that kind of stuff. People say it's kind of like talking to a friend. So let's hang out there and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.